Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I'm gonna do a recently reading wrap up that is very overdue, but I have three main categories that I'm gonna talk about, books in three main categories. So I'm gonna start off with the books I read from the Booker International long list this year. Uh, three of the books that I got to were also shortlisted and one of them were, was only longlisted. Um, I wanted to get to more of them and I will be doing that in the s months to come uh, because I have a few of them on my shelves and several of them I'm still really interested in reading even though the winner has already been announced and that was Tomb of Sand, uh, which I have ordered and will hopefully get to me sometime this summer. Um, so that is going to happen in the future, but it hasn't happened yet. The first one I want to talk about is Love in the Big City by Sayung Park, translated by Anton Hur. There is sort of the soul nightlife um, aspect of this book that I really enjoyed. It's about a queer protagonist and his relationships with the people around him. Um, so one of the re relationships that it delves into is with his mother. One of them is with his female best friend or very close friend um, and they have a kind of camaraderie that is different from a lot of his other relationships and then the bulk of this book deals with his various relationships, some of them very fleeting, with men um, and a lot of the relationships are quite dysfunctional. But the book itself is not really a coming of age story, it, it's more sort of after the coming of age. Um, it's, I think, in some ways about some of the themes that you find in coming of age stories where the protagonist or the narrator is trying to find themselves, trying to find their purpose in life, what they want to do with their life, creating meaningful connections. It doesn't feel like a coming of age uh, hero where he is very actively looking for something. He's more um, meandering through life and discovering things as he go. And I think there was something about his there is a lot of snark in his commentary on other people, on his own life, on his resignation with certain situations he finds himself in and his feelings of disappointment when a relationship, for example, doesn't pan out or a man that he's with um, is, isn't really doing, um, isn't being a very good partner or isn't um, really the kind of man that he that is worth having relationships with and um, there is something about his commentary as I said with the resignation in in those in life giving you um, those situations uh, as well as a kind of passion for life that I found very compelling and that I really missed when I'd finished reading this book. The next one I got from the Booker International was Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung and this was also translated by Anton Hur. This is a short story collection that again I had had my eye on because I had heard from friends who had read it that it was really good. Uh, one of them being Yamani. Um, that so I was looking forward to it and it did not disappoint. I think this is a very original short story collection. It has a lot of original imagery, to me at least. It felt like things I had never encountered before. So in particular the first few stories just felt... Um, the, the stories themselves, more or less all of them have a horror um, feel to them and there's uh, unsettling things, grotesque things um, and darker themes running throughout the book and violence and uh, curses and revenge and all of those kinds of things. Um, all themes that I tend to enjoy in, uh, particularly in short stories, I think you can do so much with creating tension and atmosphere with within a short um, short story format. Some of them deal with birth and motherhood, uh, others deal with power structures and the abuse of uh, authority. Um, 
several of the stories I think have a kind of mythological element to them or a fairy tale element. My favorite story was the title story um, and I also really liked Snar I think is another of the stories is called um, and the first two were also really good. So definitely if you are into weird short stories, if you like darker short stories, if you like some of the Schweblin type short stories, and I think you would like this one. And then uh, I read Heaven by Mieko Kalkami, and this was translated by Sam Bett and David Boyd. This is a book about bullying. And again, there's a strong element of violence. It follows two teenagers. One uh, is a boy and the other is a girl who are um, who are abused and bullied in their school. They build a friendship uh, uh, that is sort of built upon their mutual vulnerability and status as outcasts. And it's just about their sort of how they deal with the bullying situation, how their friendship and relationship develops, how their situation in the school changes over time. The violence on the page and the justification of the violence and the bullying is what makes this a very hard book to read but also powerful commentary on it and I think it's hard in particular because these to teenagers don't really have anyone that they can seek help from. Um, they don't have strong supportive relationships with their parents and the teachers in question almost seem to be, they are not necessarily actively participating in the bullying but they are sort of enabling it to continue on and so the adults around them are also kind of useless in this situation and they are on their own and because they're so young they don't have the tools to uh, to get themselves out of the, these situations. The last of the Booker International that I've read so far is also my favorite and that is Elena Knows by Claudia Pinheiro translated by Frances Riddle. This is a book about a mother who is investigating her uh, adult daughter's death. The police thinks that the daughter has died uh, by suicide and the mother cannot accept this. She doesn't think that, that is true and she goes on this journey trying to figure out what really happened, what led on to the daughter's death and in doing so she confronts a different interpretation of her daughter's life and her person. Um, there is a lot of things that I loved about this book. Definitely the, the theme of motherhood is central. The other theme I would say is central is linked to the motherhood and that is agency. Agency to make your own decisions, to live your own life, um, physical uh, abilities to move around and to not be dependent on someone else. So the agency theme comes into her body and her movement and her journey, uh, her physical journey in in relation to the uh, the investigation, but also agency in terms of making up your own life and um, as separate from what others think you should do with your life. So I just found this to be such a concise and compact, interesting, nuanced story of so many interesting themes that will be worthwhile to revisit many times. Then I have kind of a miscellaneous title and that is By Way of Introduction by A. Milne. I read Year In Year Out by him earlier in the year and then ordered uh, this one um, soon after and started reading it as, as soon as it arrived in the mail um, and I've been really enjoying reading through his nonfiction. This one is divided into two parts I think where the first part is uh, literally introductions so he has written introductions to various books and new editions that have come out or um, exhibitions that kind of thing um, commenting on a particular title or work or author. The second section is sort of miscellaneous writing essays that isn't introduction type. Um, so 
The essays range from uh, similar themes that Year In Year Out touches on, like his writing career, his uh, writing in different formats like poetry and playwriting. Some of my favorite essays were actually sur surrounding the theme of being a guest or being a host. Um, sort of the, the manners related uh, essays I find really fun to read. I think especially because he doesn't seem to always enjoy being a guest or being a host. Um, he seems to prefer being in, in his own company or his uh, wife's company. One of the essays I no remember was about gift giving, which I found uh, really fun, especially because he talks about g gifting books. In general, there's a lot of um, commentary on his time and on the little things in life and the everyday, the mun mundaneness that the the small things that uh, he observes in his everyday that I find amusing and entertaining and comforting. And then we have two books that I read for the Springathon this year. The two books I have finished for the Springathon so far uh, is Why We Swim by Bonnie Tsui, uh, which is a book about humans' purpose in swimming. So it is divided into sections, um, and the sections are things like um, well-being and spirituality, I think is one of them, or something along those lines, um, or maybe it was called religion. Um, survival and community. Uh, so it's different types of purpose of swimming and some of the things that I really enjoyed reading about was uh, swimming for survival, swimming as a technique to avoid drowning. Some of the stories in this was related to physical well-being, which I always find interesting, sort of the, the bodily experience of being uh, in water, being uh, floating in water, and the gentleness on the body, especially in, in terms of a body that has um, ailments, um, someone who is going through rehabilitation, uh, that kind of thing, but also the mental well-being that swimming can offer. And that is, all, I think, one of the main things that draws me to writing on this topic. Um, and one of the things I really appreciated about this book is that it talks about stories from all over the world. So the the anecdotes and the stories and the the pieces of information are from different cultures, different parts of the world, not just a Western-centered one, which I um, thought was really beneficial and valuable. Um, one, in, one example is when she talks about uh, an old technique that samurais used for swimming standing up because you hold um, tools in your hands and just swimming with your front, uh, with your upper body completely uh, still and, and upright, uh, which just sounded so fascinating to, to learn about that kind of thing that I would never have come across, I think, that kind of story if I didn't read uh, this book. So definitely, if you're interested in swimming, this is a must read. The other book I read is Landmarks by Brom McFarlane. I will put the name of the narrator on the screen. I think the audio really works because it, this book is a lot about storytelling and storytelling as a tool to further knowledge through generations, particularly knowledge related to the natural world. So. It, it could be things like techniques or um, techniques of, of activities related to um, to working with nature or working on land, working in the sea. Um, it could be words related to the weather, put into stories to be taught to new generations. And the book itself is in part talking about nature words and uh, storytelling and all of those things that I just mentioned, as well as there's some glossaries in the book as well that sort of is fit into in between the, the chapters. And the glossaries are also really nice to have in audio because most of the words are in dialect. In part he talks about linguistics, but he also talks about nature writing. and. 
it's sort of a history of nature writing in in Britain in the UK and he's, he talks about particular authors that have talked about a particular type of nature so for example he talked about he talks about Nan Shepherd and her commentary on the mountain. Uh, he talks about uh, Roger Deakin and his commentary on water. This book was not just really enjoyable for the linguistics aspect of it, for the audio uh, experience of it, but also because Robert McFarlane is so passionate for the genre of nature writing and I am obviously too, uh, given that I am hosting a nature re writing readathon. Um, so I think I found a lot of joy in reading about nature writing as a genre, as a as a form of writing, uh, reading about authors that I want to read, and to feel sort of a, a kinship with someone who is so passionate for this form of writing. And then I have two books that are Swedish. So I've been trying to read more Swedish literature. Um, I think that has been a goal of mine for a few years, but I am very bad at actually actively working on it uh, because it's become so natural for me to read in English. Um, it's something I have to be much more uh, mindful with. Um, but I picked uh, Nuken by Molly Lindroth. Um, because of uh, Amelia. Uh, I will link her Instagram below. She recommended this one and I think she read a German translation. This book is kind of a long essay on um, the spinster as a persona, as a character in history and in our contemporary times and she's basically trying to come to terms with the idea of being a middle-aged woman living alone without a partner, without a family or children um, and how she she's, she talks about her own life and how she thinks of her own life in terms of living on her own and being alone as well. Um, but she also talks about the impressions of society on this type of woman, on a woman living alone, of a woman not choosing necessarily to live alone, but not having a partner. For whatever reason, um, that life hasn't turned out that way. And so, in essence, the spinster, the word in Swedish is kind of different, I feel like the tone of the word is different, but it's essentially what it is. And I found this to be such an interesting book. It's talking about the idea of the spinster and, as I said, about her own life and her reclaiming the word and finding a kind of acceptance and kind of contentment in her own life um, and how it how it looks um, and an honesty in how she looks at her own life that I really appreciated but I also think there's a lot of interesting things she she touches on through talking about the the loneliness and the life of living alone um, Commentary related to this idea that you need to be with another person to be whole and uh, to find your uh, your other half and um, to always have a partner, to always um, be in a pair, to be completed. And, and I think there's just so many interesting things that she nudges at through talking about the person living alone she comments on the the obsession of couplehood uh, that I found so fascinating and uh, I would definitely recommend it if you can uh, read it in your in, in your language I don't think that this has been translated into English but it has definitely got uh, other translations the other Swedish book I read recently is Separat by Donna Sidorovsky and I mentioned this one recently it has actually got an English translation I will link to the English version below um, it's called Solo in um, in the English. It is about a protagonist who chooses to be 
um, to turn away from society. And so she is living in her own apartment and she never leaves. She is always within the walls of her apartment. And the only ways really that she interacts with the outside world is through watching the television, through reading the newspapers, um, through looking out her window, um, through listening to the radio. Those are the only ways that she interacts with the external world, although she doesn't really interact, it's just a one-way uh, kind of communication. Um, but she does sort of stay in touch in terms of she still pays attention to what happens outside of her little bubble, but she isn't really that interested. She has chosen, as I said, to turn away, and it doesn't seem like anyone is missing her. It becomes clear that she hasn't got any family, all of them have died, and so she's the only one living in her uh, in her family tree, and she doesn't have any friends, she doesn't have a relationship with her neighbors, so she's completely alone in the world in terms of she doesn't have any meaningful connections with other people. Most of the book is just her talking about either her impressions about the external world and through the mediums I mentioned earlier, or she's talking about or thinking about her chess game or her mathematical problem or just general musings on life and it sounds like that would be boring but it isn't at all. I found it so immersive and I couldn't stop reading it. Lastly, I just finished The Lonely City by Olivia Lang and this kind of fits in with the theme of both uh, Solo and uh, Nukyan, uh, in that it's obviously talking about loneliness. This one really provoked a lot of thought and along the lines of the themes like loneliness and relationships in an urban landscape um, that is quite different and the, the, the ability to be anonymous in a, in a city that there's so many people there that you can go your entire life without really having meaningful conversations with anyone but you can also create very easily connections because there's so many people um, there's that duality of loneliness and the the fact that you can of course be lonely in a crowded room uh, I think that aspect to it is um, something that comes up again and again in this book um, she also talks about loneliness not in the sense of not just about uh, living alone or um, living without a lot of meaningful connections. She also talks about exclusion. She talks about the AIDS crisis and um, the homophobic uh, attitude that some people had that excluded a lot of people from the community, from society. And she talks about exclusion based on racism, based on class, based on gender, based on um, occupation as well. Uh, the ability to have a particular type of job. Um, who is allowed to be an artist, for example, I think is definitely something that comes up. Um, and I think similarly to Landmarks, I found this to be the kind of book that made me want to read so many other books and made me want to look up so many artists, made me want to learn more about all of the artists that she talks about. Um, one of them I have actually borrowed a book from the library on, uh, so I'll talk more about that if I get to it anytime soon. And so it, it both, I both found this book to be very thought-provoking and engaging and stimulating to read, which is probably my ma my favorite type of reading when I can't let go of the pen I'm holding because I'm, car I'm constantly writing in the book. But I also found this to be a really great springboard for other reading and uh, for other authors I want to explore, for other artists, and to continue to delve into the themes in the book. Uh, similarly, like with the um, the Swedish books I mentioned. So those are all of the books I want to talk about in this wrap-up video. Uh, I would love to know if you read any of these books, first of all, and to chat with you about them. Uh, I would love also to hear 
particularly if you got to the Booker International books and what was your favorite from the uh, long list or short list this year. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I will talk to you soon. Bye!